Hi guys, Pointer here, Baxi Approved Installer, and today it's my honor to introduce to you a little treat that Baxi sent out to me recently. It's their new release, latest and greatest, Baxi 800 Combi 2. It's the same as a Baxi 800, just a little bit Baxier. So let's have a quick look at the packaging. This obviously being the 36 kilowatt model, um, and of course, 20% hydrogen ready, so we're talking about future proofing there as well. With regards to features, we've still got 10 year parts and labor warranty from the manufacturers. We've got fantastic 15 liters a minute hot water output. We've got the stainless steel heat exchanger inside as well. And of course, those all important brass hydro blocks. Some new features which we'll have a look at when we get inside the boiler later on, once it's on the wall. We've got a combined PRV and drain off, which means when you come in to service the boiler, you can isolate the valves and drain out through the PRV, as long as you've installed the PRV outlet correctly. We've also got a preheated condensed trap, which is gonna help protect against frozen condenses if it's going externally, uh, which means you've got peace of mind for all of your installs and customers moving forward. We've also updated the board, which means we've now got much better compatibility with true open therm controls. So all of those different things, your nests, your hives, your CP4Is are all going to be able to communicate with the boiler for much better efficiency on your heating and your hot water control. So let's have a look inside and see what else they've changed with the Baxi 800 Combi 2. Let's get this on the floor. Of course, we're still talking a very nice sub 30 kilogram uh, weight. Uh, so one person boiler lift into your cupboard fit. We've also got rear piping inside the boiler itself, which means you've got that nice recess at the back of the combo uh, for you as well. Now let's crack this bit open. The original cardboard outer packaging as always, but this is where we have seen improvements. We slide off the outer carton and we are faced with a very different looking boiler. Right then, so the outer sleeve now removed, you can see there's been a massive improvement with the packaging. We've now got eco packaging, which means that the pieces of polystyrene that used to be here are now a clever composite cardboard mix that's just recycled paper squashed with steam into this very clever drop tested uh, packaging. We've also got on the top a cardboard tray with our cardboard box for the AD uh, Micro 2 filter, which is included. We'll pop that to one side. Uh, we've got our uh, multi-fit part, the Baxi Easy Fill filling link. This is the permanent filling link with the spring-loaded trigger. We'll look at that more later on. Recyclable plastic bag, of course. We've got your paperwork pack in a reusable uh, plastic sleeve, which I always love leaving the paperwork in because it keeps it all tidy. Uh, they've also made those a bit thinner, but a bit bigger, so they last. And then this is where the big difference is. The plastic bags we used to have have now been replaced with paper bags. So as much plastic as they can get rid of, they have really tried to get rid of moving forward with the Baxi Combi 2. So there's your connections pack in there. And of course you've got your brass valves in there. We'll have another look through these later on. When we get the boiler on the wall, we can start to see how to pipe it up. So just taking a moment to look at the new fantastic eco packaging, even the strap band is made of recyclable paper as well. Uh, even though it's really strong, I cut this off like an idiot, but really you're supposed to leave it on to help you lift the boiler onto the wall. Uh, but it's just so firm and so rigid and does a great job of cushioning that boiler. Um, they've even put a little red cap into the uh, flue outlet on the top of the boiler to stop any dust, just in case any does get into the boiler. Of course, that goes straight in the recycling as well. And some stickers on the front as well well to explain to you how to put it into commissioning mode so there won't be any confusion. Moving now on to the template, which I absolutely love. Uh, they've actually implemented a change I suggested and probably a load of guys have suggested a long time ago with putting the bottom uh, fixing screw holes on that for the jig as well. So you can mark and draw the holes before the boiler goes onto the wall. As you can see there, one person boiler lift nice and easy into that cupboard. Uh, no issues, of course, always bend your knees. Getting that flue fitted now, of course. Uh, they do do a telescopic flue version. Of course, this comes with vertical, horizontal, uh, all of your different uh, adaptations with regards to angles. I like to use an angle grinder, clean off the burrs with a grinder, and then just smooth off and uh, give a bit of a chamfer to the inner plastic flue part uh, to make it slide into the elbow a little bit better. 
Okay, before we fit the flue, because I would have definitely almost forgotten, come on. Uh, we need to fit the Baxi IFOS kit, which is the weather compensation thermostat. Now in the IFOS kit, you'll get obviously the very important instruction manual. You'll get two plastic clips, which is for the vertical and horizontal flue, along with a uh, resistor for certain boilers. Uh, you'll also get the weather comp stat itself with a huge amount of cable for going down very long flues. And we've also then got a wiring harness to go onto older models of boiler uh, with non-ERP to make them talk. Get a sticker to show that, that you've fitted one. We get two clips for inside the boiler and we get uh, a cleansing, a cleaning wipe there as well. Uh, so to fit this, what we have to do is get rid of this huge amount of cable like this. So it's out and we'll pick which type of uh, clip we want. And this is the one that's gonna go inside and we line this up. So it's just poking out, just poking out. Clips in place like that. So it's just the tips poking out, just the tip, just the tips poking out and then clip it in place with the retaining clip on there like that. Now, you get the cable now and it's basically just a case of threading. Now I like to clip the end off this and you'll feed it down through one of the bottom two holes here. Put it all the way through like this. And then this here clips in underneath there like that so it just reads the temperature of the air as it gets sucked into the boiler by the fan the bonus of it being here is the fact it's sheltered in the shade doesn't get hot doesn't get cold so you can put it on any facing wall so here we are with another time-lapse voiceover. As you can see, I like to fit a magnetic scale inhibitor on the cold main, as well as some isolation valves on the hot and the cold. We've got a Sporotec deaeration air vent there as well, along with, of course, the supplied AD Micro 2 going straight into the pipework. Moving on to fitting the valves now, jet lube in the faces. Now these are flat face unions, which means that you can do the pipe work up to the boiler and then just slip those in nicely, trimming them down a bit just to get the clip distances away from the wall. Absolutely perfect. And you'll see at the end here as well, a very easy pre-built uh, filling link slipping straight on to the two half inch threads underneath there on the return and the cold inlet. So after we fitted the uh, filling link there, we're just gonna quickly put a bit of blue juice on the shock arrester and get that fitted as well and then we're on to the magna cleanse this is of course the ad system flushing there are loads of different flushing systems out there i use the cleanse because it goes straight on to the ad valves that i've just fitted for the supplied filter of course we set this up and stick a bottle of mc5 rapid flush in there as well this really does a great job of cleaning out the radiators and pipe work in a much shorter time uh, we of course then agitate all the radiators and do a cold flush afterwards as well to make sure we've removed all of that cleaning chemical before finishing off with the mc1 plus okay so don't judge me on my wiring because we are just setting up for the flush so as you can hear i've turned it on it's telling us the pressure okay uh 1.4 bar and then we've got a countdown across here and as you can see it quite clearly says let me get you a bit closer on startup between the pressure and how long you've got left as a countdown for deaeration mode now this basically whenever you've lost power to the boiler will cycle around to make sure that the heat exchanger is clear of air and of course the rest of the system as you could hear by the noises coming from my magna cleanse so as i say this isn't finished wiring don't judge me this will be getting completed once i've done the cleanse but we're going to get that underway and come back uh, and finish it off later so just to show you in here on the board 
I have brought my three core in uh, with my 230 volts and uh, connected that. We have left the link in the pink uh, for the RoomStat programmer. That's been left in for now, but when we wire up, we'll remove that and wire in our open therm controls to the red port here, CB7, and of course, wire in our Baxi IFOS weather comp stat into CB6, which of course is quite clearly marked on there. Whilst we're waiting for that to just figure its life out, let's have a little look around inside the boiler. So up close and personal now, we've already showed you the very handy colour coded uh, circuit board connections uh, with of course a handy label across the back as well. I do like that label. Um, interesting colour choices on a couple of the bits in here. Uh, but of course the first thing we want to look at is our combined PRV, pressure relief valve. Now normally you'll see like a twistable knob or a lever on PRVs. This one well, you can't play with it. Uh, however, the yellow ring around the bottom is finger tight. You can loosen this off and it will drain down the boiler or the system, of course, through the PRV pipe work as long as it's been piped into a drain or above a drain so you don't flood the customer's patio, of course. Inside then we've got the originals, of course, the OG brass hydro blocks. We've also got the uh, what you'd come to expect is the BDR Therma branded Grumfoss pump. Uh, we've got the new residio gas valve uh, that could maybe something to do with the hydrogen ready part of the boiler. New look fan does look smaller. The fan does, and the of course stainless steel heat exchanger looks very different this time. Uh, it looks like it incorporates more metal and a slightly different construction process. Uh, still got the copper connections, of course, on the side. Slightly different diverter motor, but one we've seen before on other boilers, so that is fine too. Now, this is the absolute beast that we notice to the left here, which is the preheated condensate trap. Now, this, of course, is to assist in preheating the condensate. So I suppose that the large section here will help store condensate so it allows it to siphon out in one large amount. And if we go down here, we can see this is the fixing clip. And this part here at the bottom actually stays put inside the boiler and then the trap itself is removed out so that you don't have to keep disturbing the condensate connection underneath which I think is very clever because there was a bit of an issue with the grommet on the original combi. So yeah dry pocket sensors obviously we've got to have a wet pocket on the hot water outlet that goes without saying uh, but dry pocket temperature sensors and overheat stats on the primary flow and return at the back there so we don't need to drain down to change those in the future. Quite tidy mesh wrapped wiring harness again as we've come to expect and of course the internal easy to access expansion vessel with external Schrader valve again nice and easy to get to we've got a drip tray at the top here with an absolute monster of a trap by the looks of it underneath along with a very nice wide hose going down to the top of the condensate trap so that's the inside oh not to forget We've now got the pressure gauge inside rather than outside because that would usually be around here. I'm not sure how customers will feel about that or installers, but it's what they've decided to do. Uh, we do, of course, get a digital readout of the pressure on the front of the boiler, um, which is, of course, at the moment 1.7, which, yes, I would say is perfectly reading. So that's great. Um, usual data tag, and this is, of course, uh, where it tells you that it's natural gas preset. However, something that's very important to remember about the Combi 2 um, is that it's actually manually transferable over to LPG. So you don't need to buy any kit, you don't need to buy a different boiler. This boiler can do both. The simple changeover process uh, on the parameters, which you can find in the manufacturer's instructions, you can uh, stick it on LPG, which would be fantastic for those living out in the sticks. So the boiler has now, of course, fired up on its own because we've got that heating link still in with no external controls wired up as yet. We've not got the front on the boiler, and yet that's obviously ramping up to maximum, and it's very quiet. I'm very impressed with that. 
as quiet as the heat only. I don't think anything's as quiet as the 800 heat only, but it's very quiet. The fact I can talk to you guys with the front off the boiler is uh, rather magnificent, wouldn't you say? Very quiet. And there we have the money shot, as we call it in the trade, the results of the Magna Cleanse system flush, and it was definitely well worth doing because we wouldn't want any of that in the boiler. Uh, as well above, you'll notice some of the other models that they do, the 600 and the 800 system and Combi 2, of course, uh, with a new 30 kilowatt system output, which is pretty hefty for those larger properties when you're incorporating a cylinder and, of course, underfloor heating. This boiler actually comes with an underfloor heating setting that you can change in the parameters to keep the flow temperature which are lower down for a set amount of days whilst you're waiting for screeds to go off, which I think is a fantastic advancement uh, in the controls of this boiler uh, with those nice continual turning knobs and those four buttons at the bottom. It gives you so much more access to the boiler controls. So, as you can see, we are finished. It's been a couple of days of graft but it's been a labour of love because of course I've had the honour and opportunity to install the Baxi 800 Combi 2 in my own home which is just wonderful. Um, I love fitting them for customers obviously hence why I'm a Baxi approved installer but to get one in my own house is just brilliant. We've obviously gone through a lot of the new features that the Combi 2 has to offer along with of course all of the returning great features that Baxi has always offered with their 10 year parts and labour warranty boilers, the 800 range. We've got new controls, which I believe are quite straightforward and easy to use, which is brilliant. We've got some modifications to the valves, some new parts inside to make things a little bit backsier. I think my favourite part is the combined PRV and drain off, which is just brilliant. It clips on underneath once you finish doing the rest of your pipe work so it doesn't get in the way like it did previously. And of course gives you a fantastic full bore internal drain off to be able to drop that boiler pressure to work on it if you need to do any kind of service work, such as topping up the expansion vessel on your annual service. Looking at it, we've got some new controls down the bottom as well. Just going quickly back to the open therm capabilities, along with the Baxi IFOS weather stat that I showed you earlier on in the video, this is going to really help lower down that gas usage, which of course is all important nowadays. We've left the sticker on the front here for myself and I always do for customers, just to explain the two fault codes most commonly um, to do with low system pressure and of course the instruction, just in case there's anyone else in the house with no heating or hot water, to top the boiler back up. And not to forget we've obviously completed our AD Magna Cleanse and protected the boiler with the included Baxi uh, AD Micro 2 filter that comes in the box along with a 10 year warranty on that as well, covered by Baxi. All in all, I think it's a fantastic boiler. It's quiet, it's lightweight, it really is a TARDIS boiler. It's got so much room inside for working on if you have to, and yet still manages to fit very nicely into a standard wall hung kitchen cupboard. We've gone for the horizontal flue, but like I say, there are other fluing options uh, from the Mortifit range as well. And I am just absolutely thrilled with what a fantastic looking boiler it is. And of course, backed up by the all important 10 year parts and labour warranty from Baxi themselves. That's it from me. Of course, if you want to find out more about the new Baxi 800 range in combi or system, which of course can run on natural gas or LPG, then head over to baxi.co.uk for more details. And of course, to be able to find your local Baxi approved installer. I'm Pointy, thanks for watching.